Welcome to another part of my basement. This is my uh, hot water boiler. It uh, uses natural gas and it burns it down here and it makes hot water and heating for my house and uh, some other heating solutions too. But this is one part of it and it's built in 1991 and now it has failed me a bit. Well, the internal pump down here which uh, circulates water from the tank down here through the boiler up here has stuck working and it smells like shit because it's burned uh, and all the power is off don't be scared so I'm gonna switch this pump and this pump for new one because well they are made in 1991 and they are consuming something like 70 watt each all the time so I have found or I had to buy one of these modern ERP pumps, which means they are low, low power consumption, consumption, and uh, they are adapting the speed on to the pressure in the system and things like that. So it should take a lot less electricity. Uh, just some things about these pumps. They're not that hard. You can find them. Remember to check the pumping direction and check the pump you're removing and check the instruction in which direction you can put the electric connection so you turn it around in the correct direction you don't want it like downwards the water can sip on it and another thing i've seen it sometimes do never put these pumps in this direction because they are wet pumps that means the water that's pumping for the pump is also used for cooling the pump and for lubrication in uh, the bearings so if you put them this way you're gonna get trapped air inside the pump and you're gonna get destroyed. So I'm gonna start removing things and see how it ends up. And we're in place. Uh, step one, and this is an ice cream bucket. Something to catch the water. Below the pump. And of course, make sure you do not have too hot water in the system so you don't get burns. And in this case, a good thing most pumps are mounted like this and well, they should be mounted like this there's a valve on each side in this case uh, there's a cutout for a screwdriver so you can use that to close them but sometimes you see these valves with a cutout which looks for a screwdriver with also a hex out cut in the middle that's for the allen wrench use allen wrenches do not use a screwdriver in that case because you will destroy it so first of all Turn off the water. I think we can maybe also drop the pressure a bit in the pump. So about the bad lighting. This is my boiler room. I don't care about lighting in here because these are things that are just supposed to work. So we'll get some water out of it. I need, get, I need some tools. And uh, let's see if this works. Small tips. Uh, these are some called uni connections or pump connections. Grab a hammer before you do anything and give it a couple taps in different directions to loosen any corrosion or rust or anything. You don't need to use all the force you can have. Let's see if this moves. Or we need another plier maybe. Oh, the pump's gonna be. Ugh. One side. And you can turn down it. Ah! Yeah. Come on. Oh yeah. We are lucky. Nice and easy. And a little bucket down below. Side and 
Now you maybe understand why you want to make sure that the water is cold and not boiling hot because you are going to get water all over it. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. I don't want water all over my floor. And the seals came off at the same time, good. place let's look at this one and now I move that one. Oh, I was too eager it was that way and the arrow was pointing that way but now it's great to the hot water out to the house the heating system in the house so we're gonna have a new pump and lucky us it's in the correct direction because if I wanted to put like this I do not want the electronic at the bottom then I had to loosen the four screws and turn around the pump house the other way but now it's correct and we will just check no too much scrap and we will grab some new seals check when you buy a pump that you get new seals rubber seals because you do not want to use the old ones. Let's see. Move that one away. At the correct position. And screw it. Well, having a house means you have to spend your Saturdays in the most enjoyable ways. And the other side. See, that's in place. Come on. And also, if you're gonna buy a pump, check that you get the correct size in measures that's different from different countries. In Sweden, we have two lengths of pump. 130 millimeters and 180. This is 130, but most pumps come in both lengths. So just check that you get the right one. Come on. I don't like the way you're cutting the. Is it correct now? Let's see. Yeah. Always use your hand and fingers to start with when you take out the big tools. right or wrong and you can laugh at me slowly open get the flood of the pump and get a slight bank on the pump that's better did I have a drip no I don't think so Go from the second side but now this is a low pressure system because it's only the heating system in your house you will not be in major leaks and now we must got to flush the pump, remove the screw at the end. Normally you have to do it with the pump running too, but because you, this is a wet pump, you always want water in it. Never dry, the run of this on one of these motors dry because it's gonna get destroyed. So now I'm gonna fix the electric connection because there's a nice plug. So I'm gonna put this together and try out the pump. And 
and I have power connected. Quite nice. Uh, it's prepared of course connection, but you can easily remove it. And there's that, and power on. And the noise starts, and it speeds up. And it shows the watch. How much power is consuming? If it's the correct number or not, I don't know. It starts up at speed free. This pump has, I think most of these have some similar configurations. You can run it at speed free, speed two, and speed one. That's fixed speeds on the pump. You have the auto setting that is doing some kind of manipulation in how fast it goes. And then you have the proportional settings and lowest, second, third and fourth. Uh, in this setting it's changing how fast the pump is going according to the pressure of the system and how much is pumping there, difference between the, the systems. I'm going to try this one in auto later. Or maybe the lower set because might have a quite small house. That was with pump. Uh, I'm now going to work on I'm going to turn off the power again. Uh, switching the internal pump. I will not film that because I'm gonna ram my hands into the side and might say a lot of dirty curse words. So I will be back when that is in place. And after a bit of work, I've got switched out the other pump too, and as you can see, it's uh, right now running at 28, 29 watts, and the one up here is at 12 watt right now. That's for the heating in the house, and that's for internal circulation. So, calculating compared to the old pumps, I'm saving something like close to 900 kilowatt hours per year. Not that you're making money, but that's what it is. And today, basically, you can only find these speed controls pumps. The old style of the single speed pumps are slowly disappearing because these are now going down in price and yeah, new, year, new year rules for energy consumption means that you're forced to use these kinds of pumps. Uh, now there's one more function of this pump than the, some other brands too. There's a little moon. Uh, that's a night setback function. And what it does is it measures the temperature inside the pump. And if it drops rapidly and or a slow descent in temperature, it slows down the pump even more. And that can be useful sometimes, but you have to think where the pump is mounted in the system or placed in the system. Uh, in this case, my pump is on the hot side of the burner and feeds down to the tank down here, which means that this pump is going to feel the temperature change when the burner goes on and off. So I would try to use the night setback. But if the pump was uh, placed on the other side, on the cold side, there would be no temperature difference and night setback would not work. So that's also in the manual if you read it. So be careful about that. If you want to try out new pumps, think how they work and check the connections and things are doing so now I'm just going to take out the burner and do some cleaning on that and some service and then put everything together and get it somehow to work again so I can get a shower see you later <laughs> 